defenders had held talks at Wise Fork for four days, but began to withdraw across the Noose River and abandon Kinston. The CSS Noose, the warship docked at Kinston, provided covering fire for the withdrawal. The CSS Noose was one of four ironclad gunboats completed by the Confederate States Navy here in North Carolina. It was one of two Albemarle class ironclads. Uh, the uh, contract was signed between the builders and the Confederate Navy in October of 1862 and construction began immediately. Uh, the, the hull of the ship was laid down upriver at what is now Seven Springs. At that time it was called Whitehall. Uh, they chose the Whitehall building site because of available building materials, the availability of a sawmill, and the idea that it was somewhat protected from federal attack. Uh, that proved to be false in December of 1862 when the building site was attacked as part of General Foster's raid. Uh, however, the, the construction of the hull was completed in late spring, early summer of 1863. Upon completion of the hull, uh, it was floated down here to Kinston, and all the outfitting was done here at Kinston, and there were reasons for that. The, all the iron plating, the engines, the guns, all the heavy stuff was put on the boat here at Kinston. The reason they did that here at Kinston was because, first of all, they had a, an available rail connection where they could get the supplies they needed here. The other thing was they had a high bluff on the river bank where they could easily lower things down into the hull of the ship made it a lot easier to get some of those heavy pieces in there, particularly the engines and the guns. The construction of the noose was delayed, primarily due to competition with the Confederate Army over the use of the railroads. When she was launched in April 1864, the gunboat had a shallow draft, was 158 feet long and 34 feet wide. She had four inches of armor plating on the casemate and a two-inch band of armor on the waterline but the decks were unplated as was its hull below the waterline. The noose was armed with two heavy rifled artillery pieces. She had a, a complement of roughly 80 officers and crew members. Um, in, in the beginning, uh, they had a lot of good officers and, and petty officers, but they didn't have a lot of, of crew. And so most of the crew of the CSS noose was culled from the Army. Uh, most of them came from Robert F. Hoke's division. Um, a lot of them had no experience on the water or on a boat at all. Some of them did. Uh, when you look at records for some of them, some of them were from the eastern part of the state and were fishermen or watermen prior to the war, but they were few and far between. Uh, most of the crew members for the CSS News came from the Piedmont area of the state and were very, very inexperienced on the water. Shortly after she was completed, the noose was sent downriver to participate in Hoke's attack on Newburn. However, she ran aground in the sandbar about a half mile downriver. About a month later, the river rose enough for the ironclad to be refloated, and she remained at dock in Kinston for the following several months. The noose did see action following the Battle of Wise Fork. General Braxton Bragg ordered Captain Joseph Price, the third captain of the CSS noose, to take the vessel downstream and shell the federal forces and delay them while the Confederate Army was evacuating Kinston. Uh, Captain Price and his crew did just that. They steamed downriver, they engaged the federal army, firing shells at them to hold them at bay. And once the evacuation of Kinston was complete, they set fire to the vessel and scuttled her right there in the river. Uh, the crew and the officers got all their personal belongings, left the ship to sink, and retreated and evacuated with the rest of the Confederate Army. The delay at Wise Fork bought time for Confederate General Joseph Johnston, who had recently been given command of all Confederate forces in the Carolinas, to concentrate his troops in an effort to halt Sherman's advance. After the Confederate defenders around Kinson withdrew, Cox would continue his efforts to link up with Sherman and Schofield at Goldsboro.